So my name is Jean-Baptiste Stolkroft and uh, Jibek Fed is my nickname and Fedora. And I'm contributing localization for a few years now. Uh, what we did in the localization team recently was the localization of the documentation, the migration from Zanata to Weblate, and now the, the new big project is providing language me measurements in Fedora. And we went very lucky because we were able to, to go far in the past because the packages were are still available on the mirrors. So we were able to run this system on old uh, releases. So, so I will do it in a very, very simple manner, just explaining why we do this, explaining the difficulties that, that we had and the challenges. Then I will share a little bit about the result and tell you a little bit what you can do to help us, to help everyone to have a better localization in, in the Linux world. So, um, if we wanted to work on measurement is to be able to understand where we are at the global level. Um, the user experience is at the operating system level. So we had to measure not only what the Fedora community is doing, but the whole open source community, uh, the whole community and people contributing to the Linux eco ecosystem. And also it's, it should help us to reduce complexity because localization is a combination of a lot of layers, technical things and codifications with complexity in how to handle each language. For example, right to left writings, uh, the, the, way, the way to handle plurals, it's a complex world. So we try to, to make it easier to, to understand so we can start thinking about uh, how are we moving forward, how are we evolving over time? Is our global community uh, in good health or are some languages uh, going going down in terms of contributions? So the challenges uh, were many, but the biggest one is Linux and Fedora specifically is a distribution. So it's a combination of thousands of software so there are multiple ways to store localization files uh, in each project. Sometimes it's on the same uh, Git repository, sometimes in another place, sometimes it's, it has its own release cycle. The language codes are not harmonized, meaning um, depending on the projects, you can use a single two letter codes or you can go up to three or five letter codes plus the way to, to write them the 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 writing script the file format are not harmonized at all so it means that um, each file uh, contain contain uh, some information about the language sometimes this information is in the name of the file sometimes it's written inside the file sometimes it's written using a code sometimes it's using uh, the full name of the language and it's it's it was very complex and of course, if you want to make uh, a computation of, of data across 20,000 software, it takes a lot of time to download everything. It takes a lot of time to compute everything. And of course, when you have a bug, you don't want to restart from scratch. So I will not go into details on how we did. I will go into detail on what, what, uh, what are the, the outcomes. We are not the first one to try to do this localization the localization team in debian also also does this it's using some pearl and the content is a little bit uh, obsolete because it covers uh, it detects translation file in a very very basic manner in ubuntu they do the same but you know ubuntu is is doing some downstream contribution it means what you do in translating in launchpad most of the time will never reach the upstream project this is a philosophical difference that we that we have in fedora we always contribute upstream and in fedora itself we also have a, uh, um, a project which is named transstats 
Tonstats is a very interesting tool that that focus on uh, there is multiple place where the 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 translation are and is it synced together and do we have all uh, the 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 language did we do, do we forgot to push some languages to to the package but to my opinion it's a little bit complex but it's way nicer than what we did with translations that that federal project that talk so let's talk about the results. So as you can see here, you should see two, um, two little um, graphics. So on the left, you see the number of packages in Fedora. So with Fedora 10, 13 years ago, uh, we had like 6,000 packages. And out of that, we had almost 1,000 packages with, with uh, actual uh, translation detected inside it. And in Fedora 34, we now have more than 20,000 packages. And as you can see, the, the trend, the number of number of packages that, that have translation is, uh, is way lower than the trend of the number of packages in Fedora itself. It does not mean something very negative because all packages then don't necessarily need translation. For example, we have wallpaper packages. We don't translate wallpapers. So uh, if there is no translation for wallpapers, it's no big deal. But still, you can see that uh, the number of packages with translation increased. I think in, that in Fedora 34, we have 2,300 packages with actual translations. But the most important is on the right, on the right hand side. Uh, you can see in Fedora 10, we had more than 5 million words to translate. And now we detect more than 25,000, 25 million words to translate. So if you, if you want to translate this as a human, and if you are alone doing the translation, it means like it will just take you 12,500 hours to do everything which is impossible for one single person to do it. In the 25, in the 25 million uh, words to translate, there is, um, there is a lot of different content. Some content is specific to the user interface. Some content is related to the documentation of the, the, the software itself, or it can also be man pages and, and et cetera. So the fact that we have more and more words to translate means that we, the, the coverage of what we can translate is increasing over time. It means we can, we can do more translation of man pages, we can do more, more translation of uh, documentation that can be inside the, the, the software itself. Like for example, the first time you, you launch GNOME, uh, you will you will see a welcome page and and some tips about how to start on on GNOME. This is a documentation embedded inside the software. So the amount of work required to translate is it's outstanding, and as you can see, the number of language available in Fedora Linux is increasing over time. It means even if it is impossible to reach one hundred percent. There are still people who want to promote their language, who want to translate, who want to contribute to move. Okay, they won't have the whole operating system translated, but it's no big deal. They will they will still translate the key software for them, and one by one they will they will slowly uh, provide a good user experience for non-English uh, natives. In this website, I wanted, it was very important to, to me to show the diversity. Um, often there is a misunderstanding between a language and the territory. A territory is just a political border uh, that have some, some rules inside it, but it can contain many, many, many languages. Here in for this, uh, for this uh, website, I reused some data coming from the CLDR, which is part of the Unicode con consortium, which contains a lot of data. So you see here the Russia territory. Russia contains 141 million habitants. 
and of population. And you can see that there are a lot of languages. Some of them are official, like Russian, but you have a lot of regional official languages. So the percentage that you can see here is based on the total population. So even if you have 1% of the population talking a language, it still means more than, than a million people talking this language. I wanted to highlight this because we often forget that uh, Russia is, Russian is, is spoken a lot out of Russia. French is, is spoken a lot, a lot out of Russia. And on the right-hand side, you can see uh, the list of languages which are available in each language. So you can see on the top the list of languages for Fedora 34 and the list of languages for Fedora 10. So it increased a lot and uh, it always increased over time. I don't go in, in all specificity of language codes and, and etc. I just wanted to highlight this, this fact. For, for for each language, <clears throat> for each language, I try to to list the list uh, the territories in which this language is spoken. So here you have French because obviously I'm French with, by my accent. You you could have guessed. You can see that French is spoken in many countries. Whatever it is, official or not official language, it doesn't matter. So you have some African countries, but you have also North America with, with Canada, you have, and you have a lot of uh, countries that are impacted for French. So when you contribute to French language, you can help people who actually are in, in the Canada or in Africa or in Belgium or whatever, whatever. It, it goes way beyond the, the borders. So something very important is uh, about language pro progress is uh, the measurement. You can either measure the progress of French translation on what is started, or measure the French language uh, translation across every single packages that can be translated. So the French uh, translation progress is 83% for, for what was started and is about 39% if you compare it to every single translatable uh, string in Fedora itself. You can see there is a single script language, it's Latin, but you have some language who, who can do who can, uh, scripts. And the progress is based on the 25 million words that are, that are, that are available for translation. So, this is a major language. We have a lot of French people contributing to, to translation. And uh, so there's a few, a few disclaimer to, to, to do here. When we compute the, the translation statistics for now, we only focus on GetText, the PO file. And there are other uh, translation files, but we don't cover it for now. And when we do the computation, we don't try to guess if it is a, a man page, the documentation, or if it is the user interface, or is it the priority string in the user interface, or is there some very hidden uh, screen in the, at the end of the, the user interface? We don't try to, to do that. If you want to see that, you can do in GNOME, you can go in GNOME, and they they do it very well. Where there is no need to 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 try to do better than them, and each project is uh, providing its own measurements. Of course, uh, there are some bugs, and that can be either uh, upstream in the file format or in our code. So we should be quite close to the reality, but still there are some some limitations. And what we will have to provide in future releases is the language health. Um, we are able to, to do the computation for languages across religious, releases, but we are not yet able to, to provide an easy uh, progress rate for each language because it depends. There are some new packages that are added, some, some packages that are deleted from the federal repositories. So uh, there are still some work to, to provide useful uh, health um, measurements. And there's a lot of details to, to, to improve, like for example here, the, the list of territories, 
provi provided is using some some CLDR codes, which are not very easy to 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 read. So you can guess that then BF is Burkina Faso, of course, and there is a lot of a uh, lot of traps here. So. Also, a thing that provide that this website provides is uh, some translation memories. So this, these are basically huge files containing all the translation that were done in Fedor. The, this is the compendium. The terminology is an attempt to to find uh, occurrences, recurrent or uh, recurrent translation of the same word to build some kind of dictionary, translation dictionary. And the translation memory is a very gener generic um, database that is written in XML that you can use in many many translation platform or ma many translation tool uh, to help you to go faster with, when you translate because uh, there's a lot of translation that exists. You can reuse it when you are translating a, pro a program. So as far as I know, there's no no uh, other um, organization pro uh, providing these files to translator. So we hope it will be very useful for translator to, to be more efficient or also to detect some errors. Because for example, some languages like to translate everything like French, we like to translate email because we don't like to use uh, English words for concepts we, we use every day. So uh, normally you should be able to use this file uh, to, to, to spot some errors and stuff. So this is uh, an overview of the results. And there are a lot of things, there are little things that you can do to help. Uh, if you are a developer, you can help us as translators to translate. If you trans you can make translatable your software itself, you can help to make translatable the man pages, the website, the documentation. And for for this, just keep it simple. Use standards, use get text uh, pure files for everything. And if you need to convert uh, some content, like for example, what we do with uh, ASCII doc and the, the whole uh, Fedora uh, documentation system, we use PO4A. PO4A means PO for anything, which makes it way easier to update and keep uh, and keep the the content uh, easy to translate. And of course, there are some very good tools. For example, if if you have to make a website, there is the Hugo Static Generator, which handles uh, gen uh, localization very well and is very easy to personalize. So just be careful to, to use the, the good tool to make your life easier, to make translators' life easier. And to make it easy for us to contribute, just try to provide a, a suitable tool um, that allows us to work as a team, translation team, and to allow to automate all the dirty works that we have to, 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 to do in a Git repository to update the file. So Weblate does that very well. That's the reason we choose Weblate for the Fedora community. There is many hosting possibilities that are free. You can be hosted by Weblate itself. You can be hosted by the Fedora project. There are some other instances in the OpenSUSE, or you can go also on uh, Documentation Foundation. Uh, don't try to limit languages, whatever the size of the translator of the community, whatever if there are only 10,000 10, speakers in the world, if there is someone who is willing to do the translation, just let it do the work. And you may eventually set a, um, a percentage level to approve the language, like I want at least 50% uh, of my user interface to be translated before included upstream. Okay, this works very well. But please don't make pull requests. Pull request and peer review is awful when you do translation. And move this work to the translation platform. Again, you can do it in Weblate, you can do it in TransFX, you can do it in, in the translation tool. It's way easier for us uh, to, to, to do this and it's lower the complexity because doing some pull requests with uh, technical knowledge, which most of the translation uh, uh, con contributor don't have. So no pull request, no peer review, do this in the translation platform.
So in Weblate, for example, you have a log of everything uh, happening in the translation. So at even if you don't uh, control it uh, before publishing it live in the software, you can still access everything that was done, a little bit like the mindset of Wikipedia, and it works very well. And of course, if we do a translation, but there is a release once every, every five years, our work is not reaching end users. So try to release often, or if you if you do if you if you want you can make release uh, regularly like the gnome does uh, they have a release every every few months it's not very fast but it's perfect for what we do we know when is the next release we know when we, it will reach end users it's easy for us to to plan off our work because if a translator don't know when you do the release of your software it can be a little bit frustrating or say okay we'll do this this one later because there's no rush i don't know when there's a release and you make your release and there is no translation in it and then the translator will come to you and say why did you uh, why did you do this and you forgot to send us an email so keep it uh, keep it easy to try to release often even if it is just translation release no problem but but please do it so i wanted also to thank all the people that are uh, providing language support in the, in allowing it or translating uh, on a daily manner special thanks to dark now francois andrieu who helped a lot with uh, the work and the infrastructure work the automation the optimization of, of uh, execution and the weblate team who creates and maintains quite a lot of tools that we use to to make this extraction from the detection of uh, translation files itself to the list of languages and they do a lot of work which is very hidden so uh, big thanks to, to to them and thank you to the world federal community for supporting this change and 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 making translation uh, uh, a subject of, of uh, uh, an important subject and allowing us to 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 work on this so I think it's the right time if you want, uh, if you have some, some questions and you can write it directly in the, um, in the chat. So I'm trying to keep track of everything that was said. So question from Justin Fleury. Did the Fedora community translate 25,000 words in Fedora uh, 34? No, uh, the Fedora community only translate a few software. We do translate uh, Persidio, we do translate DNF, we do translate Anaconda, but this is just a subset of what is providing, provided inside uh, the Fedora distribution. So most of uh, the work is done in GNOME, is done in LibreOffice. It can be the same contributor who contributes both to the LibreOffice project and to Fedora, but it's not only the Fedora community. It's the whole Linux uh, community. Uh, Linux has an operating system. Yes, uh, something very good uh, said by Quentin. Is in Launchpad you can translate software that that no longer release new version. This is something that is very important. Sometimes we have some some software which are which are old or unmaintained, and with Launchpad in Ubuntu you can still translate it and improve the user experience, which is quite useful. So, what is the two thousand words an hour? Is it a lot? Is it not a lot, uh, Justin? Yes. So I see there are some computation. So Luna is sharing uh, some. So, um, you have uh, desktop used to translate. If you don't like WebLate, for example, you can use PO Edit. Uh, the GNOME uh, translation platform is not really a translation platform. It's uh, alternate than that. Uh, gnome.org, which is more uh, a tool to help in the process to submit translation and review it as a team. So it works well. It's it's not a great tool, but there's a lot of uh, different tools that exist to, to do the translation. Uh, 
So, a good question asked by, by Quentin. How can we share the translation between distribution? This is a good question. I have no answer for now. The first step is to be being able to, to, to produce translation um, compendium, aggregation of all translation. And then the next step will be to, to share it with other, um, other communities. But I think it, it may come in the future, but for example, in Fedora, we, also, we always say upstream first. So the question is, if we detect some new translation that are done in Ubuntu, how do we help projects to integrate these new translation into their project so that we get it into Fedora? So it's complex question and it's, it touches a lot of uh, um, technical technical stuff and so Marie will you apply the slide of course <laughs> um, I will publish it uh, I think in the wiki page I, I don't know if this is the right place but wherever wherever needed so I'm done with this uh, short explanation I will just share a few links to get, where my screen? To get the stats. And Fedora, Wiki, Altenen. Uh, to join the, the Fedora community, localization community. Or if you want to directly translate without asking any questions, you can go straight here. So there's no issues in translating into Fedora or localization uh, or document federation or GNOME or KDE. Whatever, whatever you translate is reaching end user at the end. So whatever you do is, is very welcome. And to translate in uh, translate.fedoraproject.org, there is no validation required. You just create your account, you select the language you want to, to translate into, and, uh, and then you do your work. And if you don't do it well, there will probably be someone coming and say, hey, this is not correct. Can you please fix it? Or they will fix it directly without, without bothering you. Just remember one thing, don't use uh, automated translation to do your work. Uh, try to translate the things that you use on the daily matter. It will help you to do a better in-context translation. It's very difficult to, to translate something that you don't use or don't understand. And it's fine if you don't use some software, you don't have to use every single software in the world. Just, just do the things that you like to use and it will be, and take good care of it. And it will be a great contribution. I think I will stop the video and I have a question for you, Marie. And is, uh, is this recorded? Will it, will it be able to, to share it? Yes, it is recorded, very good. So thank you everyone for attending this, this short talk. And of course, my email address is not example at federalproject.org. It's Jean-Baptiste Olcroft. You will find me very easily. My nickname is JBEKFED. It will be way easier to find me inside, uh, inside uh, the Federal community. So there's a lot of positive comments. It's, it's, it makes us very happy. Have a nice day. Goodbye.